Welcome, let's begin with uh, solving the NTA paper memory based. Now we had uh, gone through the 18 to 20 second the various sets and we have seen similar questions were being asked for most of your uh, sets that were there. For example, for the first set there was a kind of unusual question that was on uh, the coding decoding problem. So you had NTA 14 and NTA 15, you had a sum of that that was given. Now if we add 14 and 15 we get 29, so what is NTA? Was the question so NTA I can simply say is 1572 and that was a very very simple way of understanding it similarly another set had questions on what is uh, pan and pair is given what is pat so here you have to simply understand a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 and proceed on and then you would add all the values and then you would see for pan it comes to 31 you will do the similarly for pat and you would find it for uh, pair and you would find it for pat the next question you have to simply add 5 plus 7 plus, uh, sorry, 5 plus 4 plus 7 plus 2, that gives you 18. Then you do 1 plus 8, that gives you 9. Similarly, you do it for the next question and you find the last one. Uh, we have face that is coded as this. So how is high coded as? So that was again a question. A lot of practice we have done through our coding decoding classes, through our live sessions, the problem solving sessions that we have taken up. Maths, there was an interesting question on Venn diagram. So very, very important. You have have maths and science students that were there so let's say for maths you had failed students that were 35 for science it was 20 and the common students who failed in both were 20 so what we do is while solving this we solve it as 35 plus 25 that's the total number of students failed minus the common students who failed in bo both so it would be 35 plus 25 that's around 60 60 minus 20 that's 40 so 40 students failed so what passed is 60 percent so that's again important now here it's important to understand the values that we are taking is not the exact value uh, that's again memory based so we are just understanding the types of questions that were asked for your exam and as we said for each of the paper there were uh, similar questions that were asked now square of opposition we had a question on contradictory approach beware of very very authentic sources because I have seen many of uh, people talking about contradictory approach as part of syllogism but this is a part of square of opposition we have clearly discussed this in the video link here so what we have is all not some and some not and contradictory is a relation between all and some not so we have all men are human the contradictory statement would be some men are not human the next type of questions were number series. So here the first series was basically 2 square, 4 square, 6 square. The second series was 1 into 2 raised to power uh, 1. Then you had 2 into 2 raised to power 2. You had 3 into 2 raised to power 3 and so on. Then you had the different series that was operating. So various forms of number series. And each of the paper had at least one question on number series. Similarly, there was question on probability. This was a question on conditional probability. So you had six red balls and four green balls you have to pick out two red balls and two green balls now what are the probability so I can pick out red red green green red green red green and so on so there could be six ways in which I can pick out the ball now how does this six comes from so let's say there are four balls that I have to pick two red and two green so total four balls so my probability could be four into three into two into one when all of those are different now since there are two red and two green I just divided by 2 into 2 so there are 6 ways under which I can pick the ball now of the total given balls what I have is 10 balls in all so 6 green sorry 6 red and 4 green so total 10 balls so red balls could be possible ways could be 6 out of 10 then again if there is a red ball it could be 5 out of the remaining 9 balls now I have to pick a green ball so 8 balls remain of which 4 can be green and again 8 ball remains of which 3 can be green. So this value multiplied by 6 would give me the total number of or the probability of 2, uh, two red and 2 green balls. Now these are the kind of questions that we have covered in our material and we have those through our uh, online sessions that we have covered very very important questions were there from calendar question uh, calendar problems in each of the paper and odd man out also uh, the variations of those so calendar very very simple you have to calculate the total number of days so let's say 9 january 2010 is saturday you have to calculate 9 november 2010 now what do you do here is 
you calculate all the number of days so let's say february has 28 days then you have uh, march with the uh, uh, 31 days so you have to make sure whether it's a leap year or not and then you have to count the months of february the days of february and you add all the days that are in between now once you are done adding all the days you have some value that value you divide by 7 if you have any remainder let's say you have zero remainder that means uh, i'm not solving this question per se i'm just telling you the technique so if it's a zero remainder what does it mean it means that 9 november 2010 would again be a saturday but since it's a uh, it's a remainder of let's say two so you add two more so after saturday it would be sunday and monday so that's how you solve problems on calendar very very important we have been discussing it through our classes now odd one out very very simple you have four choices four options each of the sets had different uh, combinations so here uh, plastic is an odd one out because all of the rest are obtained from nature plastic is man-made on uh, seminar and workshop i'm happy to have comments from students that exactly same thing was asked what we have discussed in this lecture so be very careful prepare the lectures very very nicely because there are uh, ample of questions coming up directly from the important sections that we have covered now uh, for your education there were a little variations for example in one there was which one is a first open university in the next paper which which of the following is not a criteria for deemed university next was where do you have uh, which of the following are the various categorizations of the university so central state deemed to be private then you have new campuses of ICER. Uh, so Tirupati and Bhairampur, we have discussed this in our expected series classes. CEE is Center for Environmental Education, very, very important as we talked about in line of the environmental awareness. Then you had questions related to the first education policy, the chairman of the first education policy, uh, the high, uh, higher education commission established by the states. So which state was the first in line? So Andhra Pradesh was in the first in line. MHRD includes various departments like elementary education, secondary education and women and child development. So that was one of the questions. Then Hyderabad has the council for uh, rural education. So those were the questions and the variations of the questions that were seen across the paper. Then what are effective communication? What is an effective communication? Verbal communication, the ingredients of verbal communication, so words and symbols. Then you have non-verbal communication. Minagra uh, among the schemes, so that's minimum 100 days of guaranteed uh, employment to the people in rural areas. Then there were questions on match the list. So you have to match the days with the correct date. So environmental day, environment day being celebrated on 5th of June, population day on 11th of July, then you have human rights on 10th of December. So you have to do a correct match. Similarly, there was one of the questions which talked about the disaster, the biggest disaster in 2004, that was the tsunami in the Indian Ocean. So that was one of the questions. Then you had question, which of the following state does not lie in the drought prone areas? So as given by the uh, CE you have the states which are under down to uh, which are under drought or which are drought prone Karnataka is not one of those so that was the question which is not a state which is drought prone there were questions on blood relations we have been discussing it through the various lectures now the idea was you have to understand that you maintain hierarchy so you your parents on the top hierarchy your uh, below generation that's the kids on the next hierarchy so if you maintain the hierarchy properly you were very very easy with your uh, blood relation questions direction was not the questions that i have received so far then on research the questions were bit interesting you had one question from random sampling one question from test tree test reliability so these we have covered across the lectures and then one was which of the following explains the depth of the research so objectives usually explain how deep you are going into the research so those were the kind of questions that were related to your research for your teaching aptitude uh, you had questions about uh, the formative assessment now after your july examination we talked about that this is an important section and we took a separate class on it so formative and summative assessments are really really important so we have covered those separately deductive argument when it is valid when it is invalid so if the premises are correct for example and conclusion is incorrect or false we can say this is an invalid deductive argument so that was one of the types of questions then you had questions on arrangement so you have the various nominal series ordinal 
series ratio uh, in and interval so there are questions on different uh, sections like ordinal what is ordinal what is nominal what is ratio what is interval in different sets of the papers what is a blind review what is a peer review was a kind of question so we have covered those across our series on research reporting uh, what are the various sources of data, the primary sources of data, the secondary sources of data and which of the following constitutes which category were the kind of questions. Uh, when it comes to computers, the questions were tricky this time. So you had two's complement that we have already talked about before. There was question in 2017 and 16. So we were all set with that. And if you have covered this lecture, this was very, very easy. What are the terabytes? So units of terabytes. Then the size, so size for a RAM, for a register, a memory or a magnetic disk and there was a kind of match the following questions. There were acronyms across the various papers. So some asked for PDF, the others asked for DNS, others asked for LCD, USB. So acronyms related to computers become very, very important. We have been telling this through our lessons as we had done. Uh, Skype is a interpersonal communication and then there was question in one set regarding internet as a band technology that is wide area network and Bluetooth as a pen technology in another paper that was personal area network. So Bluetooth is basically a personal area network. The range is very, very less similar to the near field communication, which is again a pan. Then you had question on VRML, very, very important. Virtual reality modeling language. So it talks about 3D vector graphics. You had questions related to input and output devices, questions related to which of the following is a component of internet, which of the following is not a component of internet. What is website? What is website? Website is basically a collection of HTML graphics, audio and visual files. Then what is uh, data transfer? So transmission of the computerized uh, form of data from one to another is what is data transfer what is goofer whether it's a website a social networking site a protocol so the correct answer is goofer is basically a protocol for sending and receiving the files then you have e partshala uh, that's an initiative of jointly of mhrd and ncrt the idea is to provide online free study material and uh, books to the students hawthorne effect talks about that if an observer knows that he is being uh, seen by the researcher, uh, he, there is changes in the answers or manipulation in the results that he would give. So Hawthorne effect, if the students are from psychology background, these questions became very, very simpler. So Hawthorne effect, Piaget's cognitive stages of development and emotional intelligence were from the sections of learning memory that's part of your psychology. So students from those background had a good edge. Then you had questions from geography and environment. What is top slip? So Anamalai Tiger Reserve, which was no, known as Indira Gandhi Wildlife Sanctuary and National Park. Uh, earthquake are measured through Richter scale. So that was another question. Uh, natural gas is much better than bio uh, fossil fuels because it is uh, having less carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. What is photosphere? What are the uses of solar energy? What are the targets that India have for solar energy were some of the variants. Then data interpretation questions, uh, the calculation was a bit time consuming for most of the students, but the questions were not much difficult. They were more or less simpler. For example, there was one one paper where you had questions on students pass and fail. Uh, so you had the students pass marks, fail marks and the maximum marks. So you have to calculate the pass percentage for the individual category, the highest amount of uh, percentage obtained, the highest amount or lowest amount of fail percentage that was seen. Then there were questions on speed and time for cap. So this much, this much time uh, covered and this much uh, distance. So this much distance covered in this much time. So you have to calculate the speed. So basically speed is distance by time. And that's something that if you know and you take care of the units. So kilometer per hour or meter per second. So if this units are all set, then this section was easy. Uh, DI, you require a lot of practice. Then you had questions related to what is andragogy in one of the papers, which is related to adult education. Then pedagogy related to child education. So variants were seen across the paper as we have been telling across. Uh, we have uh, 
the registration for paper one that's already going on for the classes so we have the link below in the description you can just check out those and those who have already qualified your net examination for the previous years and are interested in work from home opportunities we do have op uh, opportunities for you uh, just send in an email to contact us at examrace.com have a wonderful day ahead we'll be bringing a lot many series of expected questions live classes and important sections practice sections before your upcoming nta examination uh, so stay tuned for further updates from exam race have a wonderful day ahead